my guys. If you could please do me a favor, put your hands together for my friend, Mikey. Take his microphone. All right, guys, thanks so much for coming out. Um, as you know, you are all here to see the Sleepaway Camp there. So thank you for coming. And for some of you who don't know, I do put talent at these shows. I'm sure you've all seen me a hundred times. But I'm also the guy who does a lot of the horror documentaries that you all love so much. Uh, Never Sleep Again, Crystal Lake Memories, and so on. So during this weekend, if you do or may or may not know, we are filming the Sleepaway Camp documentary. So it is going to be the definitive documentary, and we do have about 95% of the cast confirmed for interviews. From one, two, three, mention of four, and return to Sleepaway Camp. So, we're doing that for you. So, without further ado, I would like to introduce the original Angela, Felissa Rose. First of all, thank you all so much for being here. This is just, um, I'm tremendously grateful for having been in this movie. Um, it, as I've said before, it's given me a life. Uh, it was one of the greatest experiences I've ever had. And just like looking in this audience fills me with so much emotion because um, I do, I love Angela and I love the Sleepaway Camp movies. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, I really appreciate it. Now, without further ado, we have the amazing cast for the first time, Sleepaway Camp 2 and 3 are in the house. Let's give it up for them. I'm going to introduce them one at a time. Here we go, from Sleepaway Camp 2. Oh my God, this gives me chills. We have Kendall Bean. Yeah. 
Yeah, I can't wait though. And you shot both movies back to back, right? Six weeks or eight weeks? Yeah, we did it in uh, six weeks total. It was three weeks per show. It was $465,000 per show. And all the weird facts. How did you get involved in the film? I was from New York originally. I moved here. I was here, I'd say, four to six months and got a call to go audition and audition and then with Michael and the rest is history. Uh, ditto, but I didn't land. <laughs> so uh, I think most of us probably went through a similar experience. And we, Audition for the casting director and then uh, for Michael and Gar specific roles. I think. And was it a big audition? Like, did it seem like, oh, there's this big horror movie coming through Georgia and they're looking for many different types and actors and character actors? Did you know anything about the movie itself? situation. Um, Amy had actually been cast as uh, Brooke and I had uh, done some acting and the uh, casting director, Shay Griffin, was my agent when I'd done acting and I had already changed over to the other side of the camera because I, I just couldn't stand still that long and wait that long. I had to move. So I'd gone to the other side of the camera and started working on crew and I was working on Sleepaway Camp 2 and 3. I was doing the pre-production and had started doing the production. And they knew I'd acted, and I was 21, so I could do the stuff because you could my dad. She was yeah. underage. Yeah. And Damn. Nope. <laughs> in, in Georgia, they had specific child labor laws where uh, I was not allowed on set even when she did her death scene. Um, or if there was sex involved or violence, I was... I and there was a lot of that. Yes, there is a lot of that. Uh, two and three is, has a plethora of nudity and sex, yes. and it's amazing. <laughs> so, and I had to miss out on all of it, which I was not... I, I was like, damn. Uh, well, you know, you're in there a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, so that was my experience. Uh, my experience was pretty good. A uh, little known fact, I actually auditioned for the role of Angela. <laughs> I have a range, but it, that wasn't quite what they were looking for. No, um, I really wanted the role of Tony, really wanted it so, ma so much that I did uh, a lot of things that actors shouldn't do after you audition, call them and say, have they made a decision yet? Oh, have they made a decision yet? So I was, I was uh, so excited to play Tony. It was a wonderful experience. Most of the crew members uh, were musicians. So after every day of filming, we'd have a jam session. Every night, it was, it was one of those things where you were very sad to see go away, you know? But thank you guys for making it a cult yes. favorite. Yes. This, yes. I did not expect this. It's wonderful. I can't tell you how much I appreciate it. I think we all do. Kimmy? <laughs> Sorry, I'm a little shy. <laughs> um, well, I was working as a model at the time. Um, and I had zero acting experience, as you could probably tell. <laughs> so, uh, but I, I was, that was like my first acting audition. And uh, my boyfriend, Tony from Two, we, we went together to the audition and we both booked it. Yeah. Woohoo! Um, but I just remember being very self conscious and nervous and going, like, oh my gosh, that was so different. <laughs> And uh, I was nervous about, you know, some of the racy lines, so I just got through it and said it, but, you know, I was nervous about that, too. Yeah, but... Um, Kim really needs to come out of her shell, don't you think? <laughs> she has the same energy today that she had back then. Aw, thanks! Aww. <laughs> no, um, so, so that was, that was that. Oh my gosh! So, Jason, my husband, and I, we were watching you for the first time yesterday. <laughs> we saw, and you're acting the original movie? Yes! The first.
first one, and oh my gosh, you're so talented. Oh, oh you're very wonderful sweet. Wonderful performance you. from such a young girl. It was just, oh, it was amazing. So. Thank you, I appreciate we're, that. We're fans now. So Thank you. Oh, well, hello, everybody. Thanks so much for, uh, for being Ooh. here. Yeah. Uh, I, I, I was a, a local, you know, actor born and raised in Atlanta. You can probably hear it a little bit, uh, Woo! you know, in, uh, in, my, in my accent. And um, so uh, Shay Griffin was also uh, my uh, agent. And Shay had a very, you know, unique way of, of dealing with me. Because I'm pretty quiet, like, you know, off stage or whatnot and easily excitable. And so <clears throat> Shay said, hey, yeah, uh, come on in. I have an audition for you. I think this should be good for you. We just have some big deal, just, you know, come in and read, you know, and I read, and she said, yeah, I, yeah, it's good, I'll so she just, just, it's fine, I'll give you a call, you know, and uh, she called me, and I got it, and she was very really just, you know, hush-hush about it, you know, and when I showed up, and um, I saw Michael J. Pollard, you know, um, who I immediately recognized, and I'm, I'm running into people who are not from Atlanta, I was used to just doing stuff with actors from Atlanta, I started thinking, um, okay, this might be bigger than I, you know, than I thought, and I would never have guessed that it would, you know, turn into what it, what it has, and I, uh, just going to be, uh, happy to be part of it. Hi, guys. <laughs> I think I'm the only one from Los Angeles sitting up here, right? Because you guys are all from here more? Or we, most of you guys were cast from Atlanta, right? And New York, I think. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah, yeah some of us Anyway. Oh, fine. <laughs> um, okay, so my audition, I thought it was fun because I got to be me. <laughs> Which is not good. <laughs> I got to play a mean girl. Um, I don't know what, what else. I don't know, we just did, it was a fun, it was fun to see everybody and I haven't seen these guys for like over 30 years so <laughs> holy cow <laughs> um anyway well what else to say well thank you for being here <laughs> all of you uh, so I have a huge question having played the original Angela <clears throat> what was it like working with the other Angela <laughs> we have not heard anything from Pamela Springsteen, so perhaps all of you can shed some light on working with her, and has anyone kept in touch with her? Do we... <coughs> She's in the back! No, I'm kidding. <laughs> that would be amazing. <laughs> uh, but seriously, I would love to hear like what you know your thoughts are on having worked with her, as well as any updates on you know Pamela Springsteen. She's, I mean, what? Oh, I'm sorry. Wait, I was gonna say when I could see her, she was just very sweet and quiet. Yeah. Yeah. Very reserved, very talented. Um, did not seem to like any mention of her brother. Uh, as the actor that played Greg found out during rehearsal, what? <laughs> well, we're sitting around the campfire scene. We're sitting around and uh, waiting. You know, Michael was setting up, and. Uh, he he just, it was the three of us, myself, Pamela, and Greg. He said, are you really Bruce Springsteen's sister? <laughs> and I went, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we went back to filming. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that was so exciting. <laughs> um, I, I, I remember her being very, very sweet. I was 17, so I was, I, I idolized her. But she was also very funny and very sweet. She had to hit me several times with the branch to make the blood bag burst. Um, and then I remember, I'm trying not to laugh, because as she's cutting out my tongue, she made this. Well, yeah, likewise, I mean, incredibly sweet, um, very unassuming. Um, I had heard, you know, things about, you know, LA, New York actors. She was so uh, gentle and nice that you had to remind yourself this is the star of the, the movie and the incredibly talented. When she, you know, the cameras came on, bam, she's a character. But really, really, really amazing person. Yeah. 
down to earth. I thought she was very sweet and down to earth and uh, just nice, a very nice person. I really enjoyed um, the death scene uh, when she killed me on the flagpole because she was so petite. <laughs> She's so little and I'm so tall. It's so funny, her pulling me up. <laughs> like, how in the world did she do that? Um, but she did a great job of acting it out. And the, the stream was like stationary, so she had to like drag her, her flesh down and to do the act like she's pulling me up, which it was, it was fun. So she was, a, she was a hard worker and she's down to earth and I would love to work with her again, Pamela. Do you know if she's still acting? I heard she's a photographer. Yeah, she's, I hear she's a photographer. Yeah, yeah that's it. So. We'll have to we'll have to do a, a, a independent like little film or something about finding her and like all of us. <laughs> well, I think mean, you know I think it'd be great. If we all just, like, There's a lot of rumors that she's not really interested in speaking about having played the role. Can anyone speak to that? Like, did, is is that I've got a sort? It'd be really funny if she came back and started killing all of us all yeah. by now. <laughs> I think I have a new script I'm ready to write. <laughs> I can play my death scene now. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but I'd love to open it up to the audience, Steve, if you would. <laughs> you could take my mic, because they're dying to speak with you, and I'm sure they have tons of questions. I think the title of the movie is going to be Finding Pamela, by the way. Well, Finding Pamela. And we'll all just, like, pursue her. This kid, the, the cast will just be like, you know, yeah. how are you? I think you should all kill her. A reverse. We're, we're going to kill her. Exactly. The one thing I learned was, you know, right now Georgia and Atlanta is a huge hub for production. You know, but you guys were, were way ahead of the curve on that. So that's pretty cool. And shooting it back to back. I do have a question. When you said you shot it back to back, then did the cast up there from two and the cast from three, did you guys meet each other at all during any of that? There was just a, I don't know. There was just a little bit of crossover because uh -huh. they were bringing some people in. Uh, Tracy Griffin uh, was also in three, and I think she had come in a little bit earlier uh, because she was going to have to go out faster. So, um, and then I, I left shortly after you guys started because I quit the New York. So. Yeah, because uh, back then there was not a lot of films that would or a film franchise that would shoot back to back. Nowadays, that's very common, you know, especially with like the Universal. Uh, the, the comic book movies and stuff I like that. I have to tell so. you too, it was an amazing crew, an amazing cast. Yes. I mean, we were yes. so efficient and everything was planned just back to back to back. It was almost flawless. So the actual production was even, I mean, about as good as the movies themselves as everybody working together and everybody got along and everything was fine. Everybody knew what they were doing. It was amazing. It really, I worked on a lot of films afterwards. Um, for about 17 years, and the, these two movies were, it was just, it was an art. It was definitely art. Tight ship. <laughs> I didn't say Simon says. Uh, yeah. I do. Um, thank you so much for being here. I'm a huge horror fan. Um, just saw the movies uh, for the first time very recently and had the opportunity to see them without knowing the, the twist ending of the first one. And <laughs> <laughs> what an <I> ending. <laughs> and uh, my question is, um, I'm wondering about the, the feedback you've gotten from the transgender community about these films, both uh, positive and negative. Well, I can speak to that. Um, it's incredibly positive. I feel very connected to the LGBTQ community. Um, and I actually am on Shudder's new doc that comes out soon, untitled Their Queer Doc. Um, so I feel you know, blessed to be a part of that. And I've heard nothing but good uh, response. Angela is trans, and I think we have normalized it rather than marginalized it because the real reason she's killing is that she's bullied severely, and that's where it comes from. And I'm just going to pin it on Aunt Martha. That bitch is the real monster. <laughs> Thank you. Awesome. Great question. Okay. Can you hold it with the chainsaw? 
Hey guys, uh, shop smart, shop S smart. Uh, sorry. Uh, we're all obviously horror movie fans here, and I was just wondering if, for those of you who are actually fans of, your, uh, of the genre yourself, if you had any favorite movies, and in particular, any scenes that were particularly gruesome or horrifying that have been memorable for you. Any, any favorite movies? Yeah, favorite movies and or gruesome, horrifying scenes in movies. Be. Ah, yeah. uh, yes. Okay. Army of Darkness. How much time do we have? Uh, my, okay, we just, since we just saw this last night, the freaking curling iron. Oh my god! Oh my god! I was like, am I, is that what I'm looking at? Are we going? Is that what's happening? See? Scare me. I, I have nightmares. My husband is not allowed to watch them but like at night because then I won't, I won't be able to sleep. So we have to watch them during the day. <laughs> but yeah. She so. said she was a big fan. What about some of the others? You know, I um, uh, I, I am a fan of the, the horror genre. Um, supernatural thrillers are probably the, the ones that intrigue me the most. I mean, starting with uh, The Exorcist, which I still think is you know uh, untouched. You know oh that. You know, that genre, but uh, slasher movies, right, are, 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 are really intriguing as well, and, and this was my first exposure at this level, I and mean, I've seen Friday the 13th, I've seen Halloween, but I was really interested in just the creativity, right, with uh, the scenes and, and the murders that took place, I <laughs> uh, vividly remember, um, even though I couldn't um, officially be on set, right, because I, I think I was uh, 17 at the, at the time, yeah, but I would try to sneak and edge my way, and, you know, <laughs> and just try to see, and, and I remember uh, uh, Kim seemed very much so, right, uh, from a distance, I think I was like in Scotland, and I feel kind of bush or something, uh, <laughs> you know, and then when I was told how, how Peter uh, was going to be off, I was like, what? Yeah, like, how is this gonna work? Kidding me? You know, you know, two enemies in the in the nose and dark going through the whole process, and then seeing it play out on film really made um, an impression. So, uh, yeah, the, the creativity and uh, just the impact uh, visually is, is something that, uh, that makes this genre stand out. Okay, one more. Okay. Pumpkinhead, because he's in the audience. Brian Bremer's right there. <laughs> <laughs> Brian, stand up. We got a question over here. Uh, okay. We're gonna work well, on actually, this. from when I was really young, there's one scary movie that has stuck in my head, and I don't know if anybody's ever seen this, but it was called Trilogy of Terror. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but that little doll. Jaws, which I don't consider a horror movie, I know. 
there. Some people disagree with me on that, but I, Jaws is my favorite movie of all time. On Halloween, it's my favorite slasher film, so which you don't see a lot of gore. It's all, it's all in your in your head. You know, you fill it in the gaps, which I like that kind of stuff. But The Outsider, I got to tell you, of all the ones I've worked on, I think is probably the best. And that one is on HBO right now. Not that I'm getting anything out of promoting it, but it's a great, it's a great, great show. We got a question here. What's your name? Jessica. By the way, I love it, and it's thanks to him. It's my younger brother. Um, I actually wanted to know when it came to like cat, the whole cast, who was the best trickster? Because like it just seems like such a fun movie. There has to be tricksters. They were such well-behaved young kids. We didn't have a lot of time. <laughs> yeah, we, were, we were making that movie. Yeah, yeah. I think yeah. the boys. Yeah, I think, I think it would have been the guy. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think I knew any pranksters. It was, but it was a lot of fun, though. Yeah. Instead of fun. I'm trying to think of a prankster thing going on. It's not really a prankster thing, but I thought it was a nice touch that Michael played an homage, or paid an homage to certain films like Saturday the 14th and the, the Jason Mask. Um, yeah, we didn't have enough, to, we didn't have time to prank. Actually, you know, Brian Patrick Clark was kind of a, a little bit of a, had a sense of humor to him. And I don't know if you all remember, he got into a car accident. Do you all remember this? On the way over, the first day we went to shoot, he would, him and Allison Dean, who was picking him up at the airport, they just stopped at McDonald's to get uh, burgers and stuff, and they're like driving in, and somebody hit him like head on, and uh, he ended up breaking his ribs. But he had a mouthful of Big Mac when he got hit, and it went all over the windshield. And he was telling me that people were like walking by looking and going, and there you can see where he threw up on the windshield. <laughs> and then he said some guy tried to faith heal him and was putting his hands on his chest, and he said his ribs were broken, and he's dying. He's like. But yeah, he, he actually, yeah, he's pretty funny. We, we spent some time with him when he was laid up from, uh, from the accident. So yeah, he was, he was kind of a prank. Want to ask a question? Yeah. Thanks. 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 Thanks, Michael. And uh, I was, I've heard that uh, towards the ending of the filming of Three, that uh, right off set was the destruction crew to knock out the camp that was there. I just wondered how true that was. Was there a construction crew off Okay. Well, my wife and I actually went and found it because we lived just south of Bremen and we got kicked off in like five minutes. Yeah. Just this white truck came out of nowhere and was nose to nose with our car oh and we were pulling up the alley. <laughs> but I was wondering if it was demolished after the filming at three. Because I heard that they were like right there ready to knock it down. Well, we, did have to build some, we, did, we did have to build some things. So they may have been tearing down what we actually built because uh, there were some things that we couldn't actually that were there already, even though the camp wasn't at a camp anymore. You know, yesterday I signed for somebody that had some photos of the site, and there was only like a partial um, part of like the mess hall, and then a um, couple of spots of where we were in the woods. So right next to our signing table is the is your table with the heads on it, right? And there was a gentleman at your table saying, yeah, out there. it's a guy from Cabby Colors. Yeah, they had gone through, and they actually there's a documentary they shot, or they shot behind the scenes stuff of what the camp looked like at that time when they went through, and it was, yeah, I mean, it's in pretty bad shape, but I mean, it was not in great shape before we started filming. Yeah. So. I, don't, I don't know if it's urban legend or what. I don't know if you guys heard this, but uh, the rumor had it, uh, someone actually died at that camp. Yeah. <laughs> before, before, before the shot? Before, before, before the filming of two. Oh, wow. Yeah, it was, it, was, it was haunted. It was a kid that drowned in the lake, supposedly, which that sounds like another movie. But, uh, but yeah, we did have some weird stuff happen at that camp. I don't know if you all experienced any of that, but uh, there was some some activity, supposedly. I, I, you remember, I can't remember her name, um, but she was our third AD, and I remember she was out by the flagpole where Kim got dropped. And uh, supposedly, she felt somebody grab her ankles. And as he said, when she turned around, there was nobody there. And that was the creepiest story that had happened in there. But that, that was supposed to be for her. It was me. I did. Well, <laughs> my phobia, I don't like snakes. I grew up in New York. I can look at rats. I can look at lizards, mice. I don't like snakes. One of the scenes, 
before the panty rain, I went to pick up my bag and there was a snake curled next to the bag. And I wanted to scream, but they were filming, so I just and backed up and got one of the crew to go get my bag. And he was like, well, what kind of snake is it? I was like, I don't know. It's just a snake. Please bring the bag. <laughs> I caught a lizard when I was there over by the nest ball. Because I just I was an animal lover. So I remember when she, we were all waiting outside. We were outside the nest ball. And there was a little guy that went by. Oh, there's an alligator lizard. So we like that or some kind of, something like that. A fence lizard, alligator lizard. I don't know what I went and I caught it. I'm like, oh my god, look how cute he is. <laughs> I, uh, and then I went and let him go somewhere else. Aww. So you let him go? Yeah. And like, like, that's very sweet. <laughs> awesome. Um, I remember at the craft room or table, it was like in a, yes, but it was in a building or something. And there's the biggest effing bowl of M&M's I've ever seen in my life. And I was so excited. I loved M&M's. And, and I would go and like grab like a handful of that's where I could do that. But like this one time I went in there and it's just like totally creepy. Like I was in there by myself and it was dark and I just felt like somebody was watching me and I didn't go get any more M&M's. Can you believe that? That scared me so bad. I didn't go back. Oh, it didn't stop me. <laughs> You either, right? No. <laughs> Can't stop it, stop it. You have a question? Uh, so when the um, 80s, uh, the huge slasher movie movement of the 80s, did you have any kind of camaraderie or rivalry with other slasher movie casts? <laughs> <laughs> we basically hated everyone in part two. <laughs> <laughs> we've, we've since made a <laughs> We were so green. At least I was green. So, the, and like with the prankster questions, I think we were so green we didn't know that we could be pranking. <laughs> and also the schedule was tight, so we were focused on like, uh, getting our job done. But we had just had so much freaking fun. It was just like it wasn't like working. It was like play. It was. It was. Yeah. Very cool. I would love to do it again. Let's do another one. How are we going to do another one when most of us are dead? We're all dead. <laughs> how, do you, how do you make that happen? Any ideas? And, and another, re another reason we moved along so well, if you guys remember, it was shot on film. Yes. Hardly anyone does that anymore. I'm sure yeah. 35 millimeter. Right? I'm telling you, this is, they, they did an amazing job. I, before I get to your question, I do have a quick question. Like, you were all, almost everyone up there was under 18. So was a, a few of them were 18. I was. <laughs> Who was under age? So three. But everyone was barely young. But growing up, did you yourself in reality go to a sleepaway camp? Did it give you a camp experience before the movie or was it something? Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Not like that one. Huh? Right, right. <laughs> and the pool was cleaner. Oh, <laughs> That was right. <laughs> we went to Camp Flintlock. Did you make a Camp Flintlock? Um, oh gosh, I don't remember. <laughs> but it was it was really fun. It was, it was good. Nothing horrible happened. <laughs> I went to the theater. Camp camp. We, we actually went to a camp camp, a uh, light sleepaway camp, and spent a week working, you know, with different aspects of theater and music and stuff like that. So. Uh, So we have uh, Camp Barney, Camp Coleman, um, Woodlands. There's a lot of different uh, camps up in North Georgia. A lot of people from, I, I moved to New York, and I would tell them where I was from, which is Cleveland, Georgia, and uh, which is near Helen. And um, people would say, oh my god, near Camp Barney, near Camp Coleman. So sleep camp was a big deal, but I guess because I lived it, you know, in the woods. <laughs> I went to a camp when I was really young, but it was in Canada, in a place called Georgian, it was like Georgian Bay, so there, it was, we had to, commu it was like a three-day commute trip, it was all these young kids, we had to drive out to wherever we were going, 
it was absolutely incredible. One thing that I do remember that was really fun because there were like these kind of little cliffs, like low cliffs and waterfalls and stuff like that. We would put our um, Jacket, life preserve, like yeah, the life jackets on, like diapers, and we would run and then jump off the thing into the water, and then. I didn't from like how the eighties were a big camp slasher genre. Thing. So. Every generation after that going to camp, it's different than somebody that went to camp in the 70s. They didn't, yeah. you know, now it's like, oh, you know, hey, Timmy, you're going to camp. You know, like, you're going, why are you sending me? I'm going to get camp. <laughs> camp's not as fun. It's not meatballs anymore. It's, it's, it's separate balls. <laughs> this guy's got a question. Uh, speaking of great horror movies, Mark, you, uh, you played the coach in Dance of the Dead. So Indeed. that's one of our favorite zombie movies. Thank you guys. So, uh, what was that like? What's your signature, by the way? Oh, no problem. It was a, a, a lot like Sleepaway Camp in that it was a wonderful set to work on. It moved quickly, and the director gave you a lot of freedom with the script and the character. And I re that's another one. I really enjoyed playing that coach. It was a lot of Thank you for being a fan. I appreciate it, man. What's your name? I actually had a question for Felissa specifically, if that's okay. I was gonna <laughs> I was gonna ask, um, what was it like in the first movie seeing a guy with a mask of your face? Like was that weird? It was very surreal. Definitely. I mean, I wasn't on set when they had him standing there naked, but I was there when they had me um, sitting and singing with Paul's severed head in my lap. So I, you know, I obviously knew what was going on. I had read the script. Um, but when I saw it on the big screen for the first, am I really loud? What the fuck? Um, <laughs> when I saw it for the first time, um, I just looked at the screen like, holy shit, that's my dick. <laughs> like it was, it was very weird. Um, <laughs> I still haven't gotten over it, but. Um, <laughs> It was fantastic, and thanks for all loving my dick. <laughs> uh, yes, yes, here's to my penis. <laughs> Sorry, guys. <laughs> the dick thing just keeps coming up. <laughs> yeah. There's no getting <laughs> I, I wonder if M. Night, like, is a fan of the film because he, every one of his movies has that strong surprise in them, you know what I mean? I, just, I wonder if he ever was inspired by it. Uh, well, Eli Roth, you know, has made mention that it's like his favorite movie. Yeah. And um, I know Quentin Tarantino has seen it and Kevin Smith has talked about it. So it's interesting how it's, you know, really kind of made its way around. But it was shocking, you know? and. And then two and three came and they were just marvelous. I mean, that's at a time when we saw so much comedy in our horror and they just did it brilliantly. So um, I have a quick question. Did y'all like keep in touch with each other? Did you make like, you know, long lasting friendships or no? Y'all hate each other? We hate each other. I haven't seen anybody for over 30 years. <laughs> stayed in touch over the years, see each other on gigs and auditions and yeah, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Cool. I'm the same agent for a long time. And then we saw each other yesterday for the first time. Oh, I saw yeah. you today for the first time. I mean, like, other than, yeah. He's very muscular, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> and the friendships are coming together. <laughs> um, yeah, so seeing you last night, oh my gosh. Yeah, we were here by ourselves pretty much because it was, I came really late. Yeah. And uh, we just like, Michael Simpson. 
Um, I was about 16 at the time um, when I heard, I had the same manager that I had when I did the original movie. So Michael Simpson got in touch with that manager um, and they said, you know, could Felissa go in and read with him? And um, I had, I really wanted to go to college, so I had just applied early admission to a college of like the only one I wanted to go to. But I went to Manhattan and I sat with Michael in his apartment and I sucked. I was like the worst funny Angela ever. No. I was like, okay, I fucking suck. Like I should not be doing this part. And I said to my manager, this would not be good for me because it's written in such a different way. I'm the quiet, shy Angela, and I really want to go to school. It was Tisch School of the Arts and study to see if I really could act, you know, uh, because I was just a kid and it was the only movie I'd ever made. So I chose to um, kind of like move on, but Michael really loved Pamela. I had heard that he sort of loved Pamela but wanted to meet me, and since I was so shitty, the choice was already like, Pamela Springsteen. Yeah, no, the other one sucks. So it all worked out the way it should. So that's I don't believe story. you that you were shitty. Oh, I was I shitty. I, I was no. like, oh my god, that's not even a little bit funny. Like, what? Because I went in thinking that it was going to be the same Angela. So my mind was stuck there. And then when I read the lines, I was like, oh, I just froze. And, and I hung out with him since then because he's in LA and he's lovely and um, it's super cool that, you know, we have all of these sleepaway camp movies. I hate when they pin all of us against each other because to me it's like each movie is its own lovely, beautiful, you know, uh, film. And I love each and every one and there's no, you know, it's like children, you can't say. So that one's better. Would you do another one? I would definitely do another one, <laughs> yes. <laughs> I'd like to play a Martha. Richard Angela. She's such a fucking weirdo. Oh my gosh, she's wonderful. Yeah, she's crazy, right? Love that performance. Yeah, that, that, that was quite, very interesting. <laughs> Dave, like, does anyone like that, else have a question? That, that camp is still there and it's dilapidated. It's a great sort of setup for we're going to reopen the camp and do something, you know? So. Who, any more questions? Has anyone got a question? Anyone? Come on, you know anyone? you're dying to ask something. Yeah. <laughs> like, was anybody fooling around with anybody? <laughs> but you go first, we'll get back to the shenanigans. Uh, thank you guys for coming, it was a uh, long time. I uh, appreciate it, I drove down, I was like, yes, I'm gonna make it no matter what. Um, with that being said, would you guys ever come together, maybe make a short film or do something different? Just you, know, you guys meet together and say, hey, let's put our ideas together and make something new, it's twisted, let's show these new school how the old school does it. Yes! What I, I think, think we would. would. I think we all liked running into each other again and we liked what we did and um, yeah, I think so. I was thinking about yeah. maybe doing where we're like in purgatory. And we, think, <laughs> we think that we like got older and that we're living these lives, but we really aren't because we all died at the camp. I don't know. I think we we have some cameras and uh, I think I have 60 acres of woods, so we could set it up. You gotta come to me though, <laughs> North Georgia. There we go. And it's a winery. Right here, and it's so. a winery. <laughs> We're there. <laughs> only an hour. Only an hour from Atlanta. Anyone have a oh, I got one over there. All right. Oh, I was the underage little girl, remember? Sir. Yeah, yeah, right. Hey, I'm Sean. And um Hi Sean. Yeah. We talk about sex that's um, right. I live in West Virginia, like I'm only two hours away. So what advice would you give someone that really wanted to get into a movie now? A young actor like yourself. <laughs> I mean, I've actually done two movies, so I'm, 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 right. I've done that. But, but in the, jo in, in the in Georgia, Georgia area, yeah. who, would, who would you need to contact? And well, Shay actually is still around. She's a casting director, and then there's a lot of other ones. But, uh, you know, 
that might be kind of fun to say how much you've loved the movies that she's casted in the past. Um, Atlanta is just uh, exponentially boomed. So, I mean, you can get on as an extra on pretty much anything. I think all the, a lot of the Avenger movies were shot here on stages and uh, I got tickled because I moved home in 1998 and uh, I had worked on some other films with, you know, different uh, crew people. And I look up one day and I see um, the production manager that I worked with for years was now the executive producer of the Avengers. <laughs> and I'm like, oh man, I should have stayed. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, I mean, you know, just check into those things. There's, I think on the, on um, the news and yeah, and then of course the film office, they have um, online, they have a list of different things you can do and go and check out. And then don't give up, just keep doing it, right? I mean, that's that's what I, we were talking about, why we never, you know, did it. I think we, I was, I never grew thick enough skin. The auditioning process just like sent me into apoplexy, so. Um, but, uh, right, right, so don't give up, yeah. So there's a lot I didn't really have that. <laughs> Mine was. Oh, I have the attention of a flea. So, and you know, when you've been, you said you've been on some films. So, maybe you guys have, has any of you, have you, any of you played extras and stuff on films? Yeah. I mean, you sit around and wait for like hours and hours. And um, so, you got to have some tenacity for that. So true. So, yeah, starting off as an extra is great because it shows you what it's like on set. But then there's a, a lot of wonderful local agents. And you Submit online, and uh, and I would recommend doing classes, getting your headshots, and, and working on your resume, building it, and submit to the um, to the local agencies because you never know, right? I say go for it, and then if you're not booking something, create something, like make uh, an independent film with your phone and put it on YouTube. Just like you just have to go with like what she was saying, tenacity. You just have to chase it and chase it. But yeah, there's a lot of um, a lot of opportunity. And you're asking for yourself, I assume, sir, right? You have a great character look. Yeah. I think you would do it very, very well. And uh, as Kim said, I can't overstate the training. Just take classes and classes and always be working on your, on your craft. Can I speak to one thing on the classes? Because I know here in Atlanta, I've done some work here in Atlanta, and, and the, the local casting directors, they offer, they, they're pretty much all, because it's a, a good money bit for them, but they offer acting classes, but acting for auditioning classes. But it's a great way to get in front of their faces through their classes. Then they know who you are. And then when your picture comes up, they're like, oh, you know. So so just look on IMDb for the stuff that's around, shot around here. And then you can see There's the local cast. Also, yeah, I don't know about that, but I, Mandy.com. Um, if you go to Mandy.com, you can sign up and uh, put in your location and, you know, tailor it to your location if you want. But then that's a great place to find out about uh, low, low and what's happening. Yeah, a lot of the films and television shot around here really want to tap into the local casting because it saves them a lot of money. So, so also, yeah, add, I, oh, sorry, go ahead. Go. Oh, I was going to just add to that. You want to try to build your resume while you're in craft classes and stuff. So if you know somebody who's making their own movie or any independent films going on, just jump on that if you can. You're not gonna get paid, but you can you can put that on your resume, and it counts. So. And, and now nowadays, oh, that sounds horrible, doesn't it? <laughs> Thirty years later, um, there's a lot of schools, high schools, and they have full broadcasting. They have better stuff than I definitely had in film school. Um, and so they're doing their short films, and they're looking for all kinds of people, and it. Could be very local to you. Um, we're up in, like I said, in Helen, Georgia. It's very rural, but we have one of the best broadcasting uh, departments in the in the area. I mean, a lot of the stuff that we do, um, we have to, of course, we deal with all across the board, actor-wise, because of the effects stuff, and and um, I find that. I hate to say it, but a lot of times it's locals. I don't know if you necessarily get as a fair of a chance as you would if you were um, from like LA or New York or something like that. I know a lot of 
lot of even the life casting stuff that we still get is people from out of state that comes in or some people. But if you have an unusual look, that does work to your advantage. And um, I know that a lot of people get jobs as extras, and there are lots of local um, agencies and, and things here. And, and occasionally we'll have some come through. But I mean, unfortunately, you know, I think that there's still a little bit of, uh, uh, I don't want to say prejudice against, you know, people from here. But I mean, it was the same for us as effects makeup artists. We, we had trouble getting work on bigger shows because they didn't think that they could get, get good talent down here. The truth is there is good talent in Georgia. And it's just a matter of it, it'll eventually start opening up more and more. But for now, I think it's probably the trouble thing still kind of hard to get good stuff to you, those of you who are still pursuing. And, and to that point, I remember 30 years ago, certain actors would have an L.A. phone number, and that was the only thing Los Angeles about Absolutely. was a phone number because of the stigma that was attached to that. Oh, you're from L.A. You, you have to be better than the actors here. Or New York. Or New York, yep. But that, they just had the phone number. It worked for some. I was still 404. <laughs> I got to tell you all, this is so funny. I worked on a project one time. It was, when, it was right before Atlanta started like, exploding with the industry. And we worked here for a long time. I was on a production, and after we were done we were wrapping, this girl she said, "I have to tell y'all, like, in no, she didn't say y'all. I have to tell you guys, we really were upset coming over here to Georgia because we thought it was going to be horrible and like really bad, but it wasn't so bad. <laughs> it was really good. You know, you guys were really professional." So thank you. I mean, we were literally crying on the plane. We were like so, and I felt like going, oh, well, I gotta go, you know, fuck my cousin, so I gotta go. Yeah, 
And I, I'm really terrified of scary movies. I've, I've worked on, was in one and worked on three, and I was terrified the whole time. I just, my imagination goes crazy. But I do love Army of Darkness. That is, so I, I, I didn't really understand this, um, but I can totally understand because I absolutely, we really do. We watch it over and over and over. I had it on VHS. I had to find it on DVD. I, I understand now. But I hadn't even thought of sleepaway camp in years. And I walk outside, and there's a brother and sister, and their hobby was watching horror movies. And they're about, oh, I don't know, 17, 16, um, whatever, 39. <laughs> and I'm about to die because they start singing the Happy Camper song. <laughs> the naughty version. <laughs> Our version. Our version. And I have kids in middle school, and I'm thinking, oh my gosh, and I said, Ella, look, that's great, that's great, I'm so glad, that's so nice, but please, can you just wait a couple of years till they get out of high school? <laughs> so yeah, it was tough. Hey, one more question, this is you right there, right? Right there. Go ahead, bud. Hey. Hi, my name's Bert. Um, so I kind of heard, uh, Kind of a rite of passage of being an actor around Atlanta, especially in the 80s, was doing either Dukes of Hazard or In the Heat of the Night. <laughs> Did any of y'all have the pleasure of doing that? I, uh, I booked it, but had conflict for a training video, so I was, yeah. but uh, it could have been a life-changing experience because I remember my line, line, as the gym owner saying, Bubba, the phone's for you. <laughs> <laughs> um, I auditioned for it, and I had kick-ass first audition, and then on the, um, when we went on the set to do the callback, I was like a deer in headlights. Oh. And I totally didn't book it. I got so like, and I just flew out horribly. But um, I do, I feel a little guilty for making fun of people from LA, especially since this doll right here. It was only that one chick on that, on that production. This one is a jewel. She is just love and light. In fact, everybody I've met here has just been a joy and a pleasure to be around. And that set was just, it was so much freaking fun. And I really want to find a way to do it again. But I don't know how to do it, but. Well, there's cell phones, and you can get everyone's number. You don't have to wait 30 years, right? So let, let's give up for a cast. Of, me. Yeah. We can wait for yeah, two and three. Thank you so much for coming to my voice and making your question and giving us such insight and enjoying it so much. Yeah, yeah. Look, I'm going to take one photo. Thanks for coming out, y'all. It's been a joy meeting all of you guys. Check them out at their table and I'll tell you a lot more stories. All the shenanigans. <laughs>